This presentation is part of a curriculum developed collaboratively by the partners listed below through a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Please feel free to share, reuse, and adapt this content. Promoting Use of Your Digital Content, presented by Anna Fahey Flynn from Digital Commonwealth. This is the final module of the curriculum, and it shares strategies for getting your content used. Congratulations, you've digitized your content. You are providing access to anyone in the world with internet. Now, all you have to do is help the world discover your content. This has its challenges. Getting the word out is challenging in the same way it is challenging for libraries to promote databases. We know how great our resources are, but now we have to help users find those resources and help them figure out how to use our content. Lots of institutions run into challenges after the digitization process because they assume that getting their content used will be easy, but it requires work. One huge question to ask yourself whenever you start a promotional campaign is, who is the audience for your content? And you probably have more than one audience. You need to figure out how to appeal and reach out to each different group. Target your promotions to each audience, and your audiences could include librarians, educators, researchers, local history buffs, genealogists, and the general public. It could also be Pinterest users, and each audience will need to know how your digital content is going to help them. You can literally put your content on promotional materials like stickers and magnets, and this is great. But beyond swag, you need to look at this outreach project as a, a promotional campaign. Start by announcing your content and showing examples on your own blog and or newsletter. This is going to reach people who are already interested. Therefore, it does have limits, so you should think more broadly than this. But your blog results will show up in a Google search, so this is not a waste of time. Contact your local news outlets and tell them your success stories. This can bring you a whole new audience. The Boston Public Library got the Boston Globe to do a story about how we digitize content for cultural institutions across Massachusetts. This helped us attract new users to our website and raised awareness of our services for new digitization partners. When you get good publicity, like the Boston Globe article, don't forget to share it through your social media accounts. Here you can see we posted that article onto our Facebook page. Before this post, a lot of our Facebook followers had no idea that the Boston Public Library had a digitization program. Social media is one of your most powerful outreach tools. You can make connections with interest groups, broad and narrow. You can use social media to harness networking capabilities of the internet. For example, if you follow other related projects on Tumblr, you can consider sharing content between your accounts. As you develop your social media strategy for sharing content, watch and learn from other institutions. And don't limit yourself just to cultural heritage institutions. Try casting a wider net by looking for ideas from any business who's using social media with good results. It's also OK to watch the projects or progress of large, well-established institutions like the Library of Congress, even if they're achieving a level of engagement that is probably out of reach for your institution. Here are some general strategies to keep in mind across most social media platforms. First, go where your audience is. Is your material a better fit for a visual platform like Pinterest and Tumblr, or would your material be better served through posting links or short comments on a site like Twitter? Think about the social media platform that your audiences will tend to use. Twitter is a great place to get content to other professionals in the digitization world, whereas Facebook hits a much broader audience, like family and local history interest groups. No matter what social media outlets you choose to use, you need to be active. Dormant accounts will not help you. Don't let the wind go out of your sails. Being active also means being a good citizen of social media by using your account to follow and like and share the work of other institutions. Don't just broadcast your social media account. Engage with other people, too. And in terms of the content that you do post, you also need to watch what people are saying about it. 
read and respond to comments and questions in a timely fashion. Also, show your appreciation for engagement by liking or favoriting other people's responses. Asking people to name a piece of equipment or asking people to post a tagline are easy and fun ways for people to interact with your content. On Instagram, you can ask people to post their favorite images on, on a certain topic from your collection. Timely posts frequently get a better chance of reaching users based on sort Facebook's formula for what shows up in one's newsfeed. Therefore, if you post something about suffrage on the anniversary of the 19th Amendment, there's a better chance it's going to end up in your fans' newsfeed. And most social media platforms are casual formats, so try to have fun with them. You don't need to sound like a robot. The Wake County Public School System in North Carolina is a great example. They add humor to their posts, but they still stay on message. Using hashtags is key, especially with Instagram and Twitter. Hashtags are hyperlinks, and when someone clicks on a hashtag, they will see all the public posts that use that hashtag. This means if you use the right hashtags, you can get your content to a much wider audience. And hashtags are so popular that many people use them for keyword searches. Do make sure your hashtags are relevant. You don't want to be a hashtag spammer, so don't post like 500 different hashtags. And post your Instagram and tweets to your Facebook page. Cross-promote as much as possible. Putting your digital content online opens the doors for all kinds of new opportunities to collaborate. When the Boston Public Library posted a large collection of baseball photos, we collaborated with the Society of American Baseball Research, and they identified the names of the players for us in each photo, and they became our allies and promoted a awareness of our collections to others. Collections don't have to be limited by physical locations anymore either. You might be a public library with 50 Civil War photos and the historical society down the street might have a thousand more. And when you put those things online, it means you can merge collections for online display purposes. If you get the word out to students and teachers and or school district, your digital content can become a valuable classroom resource. Your content might be useful for primary, primary source instruction, independent research projects, or exploring local history. Online exhibitions are a great way to promote your materials as well, although they can be very time consuming. As part of the Public Librarian Partnership Project, we worked on getting public librarians to digitize content, and we put the, that content into digital exhibitions, some of which are listed on this page. We did this using a platform called Omeka. Omeka is free and flexible and, and it's open source and it is a web publishing platform for the display of library, muse museum, archives, and scholarly collections and exhibitions. There are other exhibition platforms, one of which is Google Open Gallery. There are two versions of Omeka. There's Omeka.net and there's Omeka.org. Omeka.net is a hosted application and there is a free version. One of our Public Librarian Partnership pro Partners, the Plymouth Public Library, created this exhibition, this great exhibition using the free version of Omeka.net, and this showcases their newly digitized content. Omeka.org involves downloading Omeka and maintaining it yourself. This is free, but it requires a lot more work. Um, Digital Public Library of America hosts their own instance of Omeka. If you're hosting content on your website, do you use and track your traffic using a program like Google Analytics? And if your partner hosts your content, are they sharing stats with you? How are you, and think about how are you using these measures to redefine your promotional strategies? Are you getting more traffic with Twitter or with Facebook? Things like Google Analytics will help you figure out how people are using your portal or web page. Are they using the search box or just browsing? Do they filter by subject or mostly by date? And what are they looking at? Things like um, do they filter by subject or mostly by date might affect how you organize your, your website. You might want to move the subject category filter above date if it's used more. 
Traffic to your website is not the only measure if you're to, it's not the only way to measure if your content's getting used. You can use metrics measured by social media like Facebook reach or post clicks. This can tell you how many people are seeing your content even if they aren't clicking all the way through to your website. Some kinds of use are really valuable even if they don't generate big stats. For example, working on a research project with a class of 25 students might facilitate deep engagement with your website but the traffic might not create huge numbers. Your goal should be to get people to use your content in meaningful ways and to use your site more than once. It's not just about getting thousands of one-time users. As your users report on how they've used your content, take notes. These stories will be priceless later. You can use them to add depth to grant applications, appeals for more funding from local, state, or federal government, and for social media promotions. Um, and you can give these stories to uh, news outlets when they, when they are looking to do a story on your digitized content. These stories capture the human interest side of digitization. And digitization can sound very technical and boring to the general public, so this humanizes things. These stories and measurements can help you get funding for future digitization projects. They'll also help with the future content selection because you've learned about how your audiences, you've learned about your audiences and what they use.